Hey guys, welcome to the channel where I backtest trading strategies on Forex, indices and cryptocurrencies. So today I have this day trading strategy, which I'm going to backtest for you. I will tell you about the indicators we're going to be using, show you a few examples and then perform the backtest. So this strategy involves three trading indicators, three exponential moving averages. So the exponential moving average, also called EMA, is a technical chart indicator that tracks the price of an investment, like a stock or commodity, over time. The EMA is a type of weighted moving average that gives more weighting or importance to the recent price data. So basically the EMA is designed to improve on the idea of a simple moving average by giving a bit more weight to the most recent price data, which is considered to be more relevant than obviously older data. So since the new data carries greater weight or greater importance, the EMA responds more quickly to price changes than the simple moving average does. So this backtest is based on the weekly time frame with a variable risk reward ratio. So we go long when the 9 and 21 EMAs are above the 50 EMA. Also, when the 9 EMA is above the 21 EMA and the price crosses the 9 EMA from below. And similarly, we go short when the 9 and 21 EMAs are below the 50 EMA, the 9 EMA is below the 21 EMA and the price crosses the 9 EMA from above. So as you can see, it's a very trend following strategy. So I expect that on the longer time frame, it will yield pretty good results. So we place the stop loss at the price of the 9 EMA. And as soon as the open profit reaches the same amount that we're risking, which is 5% per trade, we move the stop loss to break even. And we exit when the price crosses the 9 EMA from below. So just as a note, this strategy is offline, which means I will go back in time on the charts to test the strategy and see how it would have performed. Um, however, it does not take into account commissions or even the spread. So if you don't know what, what I mean, the, the spread is the difference between the bid price and the ask price. So essentially, the, at any given time, you can buy or sell an instrument. Usually the broker's commission is the difference between the price at which you will buy the asset, which is called the ask price, and the price at which you can sell the asset, which is called the bid price. So let's get on the charts now so I can show you a few examples and then we'll dive into the back test. All right, so here we are on the charts. Um, we're looking at the dollar against the yen um, on the weekly time frame. So we'll just go ahead and add the indicators. We've got three exponential moving averages. So I'm just gonna click three times and then change the settings. So the first EMA, which is the nine EMA, we can leave it in blue and leave the same settings. We're just going to change the method to EMA. For the second EMA, which is the 21, we're going to change the colors to red and also change the method to EMA. And the final one, which is the 50 EMA, which is the longer period, I'm going to move, to change it to white. All right, so here you are, you can see. So we go long when the blue and the, and the red lines are above the white line. The blue line is above the red line and the price crosses from below the blue line. So essentially we would go long right here. We would put the stop loss at this price, which is where the blue line is. And then we would close when the price crosses the blue line again. So right here. And for a short trade, we would go short right here, put the stop loss at this level at 116.1. And then we would close right here and then go short again, right here and then close at the bottom here. So I'll just show you a few more examples and then we'll dive into the back tests. All right, so here are another few examples. 
Um, so the 50 EMA is going down. Both the 9 and the 21 EMAs are below the 50 EMA. The blue line is below the red line. The price crosses the blue line downward, so we go short. We place the stop loss where the blue line price is, and we close right here where the price crosses from below above the blue line. So that's a nice one to eight risk reward ratio. Then here there's a couple of weeks of high volatility. So we take a loss right here. Um, let me zoom in. So right here, we would have, this would be a loss. However, you would have moved the stop loss to break even. So that would have been a break even trade. This would have been a loss. This would have been a loss. So would this have been. And then here you've got a win at almost one to five risk reward ratio. And moving on, looking at something very interesting is sometimes because of this strategy, you might experience a very high risk to reward ratio trade. So for instance, right here, you've got the conditions for a long trade. You go long and obviously the nine EMA is very close to the opening price and you close the trade after a couple of months with a one to 31 risk reward ratio. That is absolutely massive. Um, so this strategy has very good potential. So I'm very excited to backtest it right now. So let's go ahead and I'll see you for the results. So there you go guys, the result of the back test. It's quite interesting. So again, the back test is on the dollar yen. Um, so we had a maximum drawdown of 40%. Um, we were risking 5% per trade. The risk to reward ratio was obviously variable because we were using different take profit levels. So we had 20 wins and 80 losses with two wins in a row and 20 losses in a row. Um, with a win rate of 
and the back test was over 19 years, obviously because it's uh, it's on the weekly time frame, with a total profit of 985 percent. So essentially, if you had started with ten thousand dollars, you would have ended up with ninety eight thousand five hundred twenty dollars. So it's almost times ten over almost 20 years. So that's that's a pretty insane return. So we did have a lot of losses. However, the fact that we were moving the stop loss to break even every time the open profit reached the amounts that we were risking, that reduced a lot of our losses. Um, however, we did reach a maximum drawdown of 40%. Uh, so that's pretty high. However, as long as you risk a percentage of your account for each trade, and you don't change that percentage over that period, um, you'll never reach zero, obviously. But it's key to follow those rules so that when a win happens, it recovers all of your losses and a lot more, as you can see. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you can think of any strategies that you want me to backtest, I'll happily do it. So I'll see you in the next video.